Today, May 31st, 2020, on this Pentecost Sunday, we had planned to celebrate the conclusion of our 350th anniversary year, 350 years. And we had hoped it might feel like this. Instead, if I'm honest, it feels a little more like this. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The opening sentence of the reading for this day, a sentence I have memorized, not by trying to, but simply by pure repetition over so many decades, the opening sentence for the story of Pentecost goes like this. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. In one place. That's how, when, why the magic happened. The Spirit swooshing in, raising the roof, literally igniting the followers of Jesus. The church catches fire that day. Pentecost is to the church the slap on the back of a newborn babe. It's the breath surging in, filling lungs and hearts, pumping in air, getting the church's systems going, bringing the church to life. They were all together in one place. That gathering, that togetherness, well, we've always understood it as the necessary precondition to the event we celebrate today, Pentecost, the church's birthday, that being together all in one place. Or was it a necessary precondition? Is not God able to make a way where we see no way? What if we were to take that word place and edit it a bit to space, same root, place being a particular part of space? Because we can say of ourselves, of you and me right now, we are all together in one space, the space of worship, the space of holy attentiveness to the presence of the divine, the space of prayer, the space of community, Christian community, an ethical space, a space in which those gathered attend to the heart of God. Now, we know the church is not the building. We know the church is the people. But let's be honest, when your own particular pile of rocks is so distinct and immense, its dimensions and proportions evoking majesty and divinity in ways our homes and condos and apartments just cannot, well, you get to thinking that the church is the building. Or at least you get to thinking that the building sure does help in our efforts at being church. The building with its scale and appointments, its instruments and sacred furniture, it is evocative. Evocative of divinity and sublimity, of eternity and majesty, in ways our homes, our condos and apartments cannot be. We get to thinking that the gathering together in a sacred place is how to be and how to do church. And yet, here is what we have learned these past few months, that we can do almost everything, not everything, but almost everything we did in and one from place in this new space. Almost everything. Small groups, check. Church school, check. Community hour, check. Fellowship hour, check. Mission and outreach, youth group, book groups, Bible study, pastoral care, prayer, teaching, check, check, check. Ask Amo Nwope. 
here to serve, yes, but also here to learn as our pastoral resident. Ask Amo if she is learning in this year of the novel coronavirus. Ask Martha Schick, who just last week was formally admitted as a member in discernment for ordination with the United Church of Christ. Ask our youth group, who under normal circumstances would be taking a summer break, but who have agreed to keep meeting remotely through the summer. Ask Rory Raison, who in the season of virus has been nominated to represent Old South Church on the Committee on Ministry of the Boston Metropolitan Association of the United Church of Christ. Or ask Deb Washington, who has been elected to serve as the vice moderator of the Boston Metropolitan Association of the UCC. Or ask Ralph Watson, who is laboring away at our partnership with Snowden High School. Ask Karen Wetmore, who is delivering Old South onesies to babies who have the temerity to be born in a season of virus. Ask Lisa Loveland, chair of our operations committee, who is deep in preparations for repairs to our tower. Ask Shana Gleason, Harry Hansen and Annie Hollingsworth, Carl Sciartino, Esther Sagan, Ellen and Matt Simmons, Catherine and Dante Spurlock, Dwai Nguyen and Beth Young, who are soon to join as members of Old South Church, joining in a season of pandemic. Now across the years, we have occasionally taken in new members in absentia. This is not that. These persons are not absent, they are present. They will be received remotely with the whole church watching and leaning in. Ask the members of the Tell the Story Task Force of the 350th Anniversary Committee who have been laboring away at our concise encyclopedia, Theological, Historical, and Whimsical by members, ministers, and friends on the occasion of our 350th anniversary. It is this close to going to the printer. Weighing in at 460 pages with 100 unique authors and 400 entries. We are being church. We are doing church in this space. In almost every way, we were church from one place. And, dare I say, there are in fact some advantages to meeting in this space rather than in one place. Not that I'm advocating for it. But as it turns out, our weekly worship attendance is better than it was pre-COVID-19. In addition, pre-COVID-19, we had three congregations gathering in three services across the week. Today, we gather together, all assembled, one family in one all-church worship service. Add to that, many of you are worshiping right now alongside distant family members, worshiping together for the first time in years. How sweet is that? In addition, we've actually collected three congregations who have jumped aboard with us for this ride. Today in this space, we are not just one church, but four, four congregations worshiping together. As to our boards, committees, and task forces, these are all ongoing, their work ongoing, and by the way, attendance is up. Boards, committees, and task forces, and also small groups are all reporting a nearly 100% attendance at every gathering. In addition, obviously, there is even a little magic to be had with the aid of virtual technologies. Pentecost is the day the church was gathered in one place and the Holy Spirit swooshed in, raising the roof, literally igniting the followers of Jesus. The church came to life that day, caught fire that day. Turns out, however, place isn't everything. Here we are, church, all together in this space. And while our anniversary year may have ended in an inglorious whimper, while we are keeping our distance to keep one another safe. While it's not easy in this space, it is not. It's painful. It's hard. It's scary. And we can see no end to it. Even so, God is in this space. And we are being and doing church in this space. Ask me, I think that's something to celebrate. <laughs>